So let's just uh, jump right into this, uh, to this first case. It's a 91-year-old uh, gentleman, chronic kidney disease, type 2 diabetes, previous coronary disease with prior MI and coronary drug looting stent, prostate cancer, DVT, obviously a lot of comorbid conditions. He had developed ulcers on his right hallux as well as the second, third, and fourth toes. He was referred to us after a CTA demonstrated that he had occlusion of all three infrapopliteal vessels in addition to very significant calcification of his uh, popliteal artery. He was initially referred to one of our uh, local vascular surgeons who had scheduled him for a BKA. And his uh, daughter-in-law uh, came and made an appointment to see us because she had heard that um, we, quote, had a lot of toys, end quote, and uh, perhaps uh, could deal with this in a less invasive uh, situation. So if you look at his baseline angiograms, you can see he had no significant inflow disease, but again, significant multiple uh, overlapping uh, calcific stenoses of his uh, uh, popliteal artery and severe calcific disease, and indeed, occlusive disease of all three of his tibial vessels. And you can see late reconstitution of the dorsalis pedis in the posterior tibials. And again, just a photo uh, of the uh, multiple ulcers uh, that he had sustained uh, as a result of his critical limb ischemia. So our initial uh, intent was to treat his uh, distal inflow disease, and we uh, proceeded with uh, treatment with a six millimeter shockwave balloon with multiple uh, overlapping inflations. And this was followed by a, a six millimeter diameter drug coated balloon. And you can see a really lovely result with a nice full expansion. And this is an area, as you know, we don't like to put stents in if we don't absolutely have to. Had a beautiful stent like result without having to leave a stent behind. Uh, since there were uh, ulcers involving the, uh, the toes, we wanted to make sure that at the very least we had the anterior uh, tibial artery taken care of. This was his target angiosome. And now with the uh, 135 centimeter S4 device, we can go distally and have enough length where we can go all the way down to the ankle. And indeed, we did multiple overlapping inflations with the uh, S4 device, which is a 40 millimeter device, and then treated that with a, a long uh, balloon inflation, and you can see a very nice uh, improvement uh, in that area. We then tried to open up that posterior tibial uh, angiosome, but unfortunately, despite an escalating wire strategy, we were subintimal and just couldn't get through anagrade. So uh, not a big deal. With a hockey stick probe and ultrasound, we performed uh, uh, external ultrasound guided access into the uh, posterior tibial, and we're able to deliver a wire retrograde, cross the occlusion retrograde, came up to the uh, proximal common femoral, uh, simply a matter of snaring that retrograde wire, uh, and then uh, reversing the uh, direction, and then treated with the uh, uh, 3.5 millimeter S4 device all the way down, again followed by a uh, tapered uh, 210 millimeter balloon with a very nice result. We then elected to treat the uh, 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 TP trunk with a drug looting stent, and it obviously took us some time to go ahead and treat all of that uh, distal disease and between the antegrade and retrograde attempts for the posterior tibial. So one of the things that I was really impressed by was how um, there was really no significant recoil in those areas, particularly in the, in the proximal portion of that anterior tibial, where as you recall, it was really quite calcified. And there was no recall, despite the fact that we had probably just spent an hour working on the posterior tibial. And that's incredibly important. We know from that landmark Bauman paper that after 15 minutes, we usually lose about 29, 30% of our effective acute gain just because of recall. So I think this, to me, was a really impressive case of how the recall was really defeated by the use of this alternative technology. And so uh, you can see that after we went ahead and treated the TP trunk, our final angiograms really showed a lovely result here with uh, restoration of antegrade flow. But more importantly, that patient was in fact able to uh, successfully heal all of those ulcers and avoided a BKA. So in summary, this is a 91-year-old gentleman with multiple comorbidities uh, with a non-healing ulcer of the right foot with severe calcific and infrapopliteal occlusive disease. So we were able to treat multi-segment calcific disease with a 60 millimeter device as well as the S4 40 millimeter device with no significant recoil observed post IVL. And, and this is really a critical point. With patients with critical limb ischemia, we don't want to turn them from CLI into ALI. So for example, if you had used orbital atherectomy or some other 
atherectomy technology could very easily have caused distal embolization and had no reflow in the foot, in which case you absolutely would have doomed that patient to requiring a semi-urgent uh, below knee amputation. So uh, again, this was a happy ending. This patient did very well and within four months had completely healed his ulcers and was rendered symptom-free.